Hi, my name is Kate Caldwell, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Twitter bots. So first off, what is a bot? Generally speaking, it is an application that executes an automated task. In the case of Twitter, this automated task is usually a tweet, but it could also be a different way of engaging with the platform, such as retweeting someone else's tweet or liking someone else's tweet. Some examples of Twitter bots. Um, so if we want to push static info out, there's a Twitter bot called Tiny Care Bot, which just sends out self-care reminders throughout the day to politely remind us to feed ourselves and sleep and such things. Um, we can, there's also Twitter bots that are listening for info elsewhere and pushing it onto Twitter, such as this Quake bot, which posts every time there is an earthquake in the Bay Area in California, or this Netflix bot, which posts every time there is some new content available on Netflix. Bots can also be programmed to listen to Twitter, events on Twitter specifically. So this Grammar Police bot is looking at all tweets streaming through the platform, and it will politely but kind of snarkily tweet at you if you make a grammar mistake, such as Sharon Palmer, who said H-E-A-R when she meant H-E-R-E. -E. <laughs> And then there are the Twitter bots that I found myself particularly interested in as I was doing the research for this. These are Twitter bots that use Markov chains to uh, produce text. So a Markov chain is basically a chain of states where each state is a random function of its predecessor. So with language, the state is a word, and then the next word is chosen based on a probability calculation that takes into account the language and what word would normally follow it, given a set of words. So for this two headlines bot, it is matching up two separate headlines from the news <laughs> and tweeting them out. Uh, this nice tip bots pulls text from WikiHow advice and gives us some advice in case we were curious. Uh, and then this Olivia Taters bot mashes up searches that users make with adverbs, like literally or obviously, or in this case, inevitably, so it takes these different clauses and pushes them together with the adverb hinges. And then the point is that Olivia Taters is supposed to be a teenage girl, just letting her teenage girl thoughts enter the world of Twitter. <laughs> so with all of this in mind, uh, I wanted to bring together the functionality of listening to tweets happening on the Twitter platform and creating Markov language chaining. Uh, so I made Body <coughs> McGee. <laughs> this is Body McGee. Uh, Body McGee, so if any user tweets at Body McGee, Body McGee will tweet back to them a suggested title for their autobiography or tell-all memoir based on that user's most recent tweets. So this stream is pretending that Neil deGrasse Tyson, Kim Kardashian, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump had tweeted at Body, Body McGee. Um, and then also the last one is my personal Twitter account. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> these are some suggested, some funny, some kind of esoteric autobiography titles for these users. Um, this bot uses the Twitter NPM package, which just helps uh, us talk to the Twitter API with kind of route language, the way we do with Express. And then it uses the Markov NPM package to do the Markov chaining. Um, so we're just going to step through Body McGee's code for a little bit. So the first thing we do is we want to be listening to the Twitter stream of statuses of the, of the tweets on the platform. And then when something matches the parameters we're tracking, which in this case is the string at body McGee, we want to capture that tweet object that matched our parameters and throw it into our callback function. Um, so ultimately at the end of all this code, we are going to have a response string and the at string of the initial user that tweeted at Body McGee. So we can then push that out at the end. But first, we've captured the username of the user who tweeted at Body McGee. So now we need to go and grab their most recent tweets. So we do this get request. The response to this get request is an array of tweet objects that line up with the tweets that you would see if you went to any Twitter user's profile page just on the website. And then it filters and cleans up the text so that instead of an array of objects, we are left with a string that is just all of the text from those tweets that it found. 
So now that we have a string of that user's most recent tweets, we can seed the Markov package and start using the Markov chaining functionality. So I built some helper functions to deal with that Markov chaining. Um, ultimately, make title is going to return a two-word title, and make blurb is going to return a dozen-ish word blurb. <laughs> uh, so let's look at these helper functions. So here's make title. It picks two words that are longer than six characters from that whole string of the tweets. And then make blurb starts out with one of these six uh, random blurb starts that I wrote just to add a bit of coherency. And then from there, it chains off the last word in the title to make the Markov chain. So now that we've populated the response string, we can actually send the tweet. So we post in this route uh, the at string and the response to the statuses update. Uh, and then the tweet is sent into the world. So now that we've walked through the code, we can interact with Body McGee live. <laughs> so I have my phone up here, and I will be tweeting at it from my own personal Twitter account. Anybody else who wants to do that can also uh, tweet. All you do have to do is just tweet at Body McGee. You can literally say anything within the content of the tweet. So I'm saying hello. I'm going to tweet at it and refresh. And here we go. It's my new <laughs> suggested title. And Sarah has one as well. Oh, and Kazai. Oh my gosh, we have so many. This is so <laughs> fun. So, yeah, that is Body McGee. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and then finally, just some resources for what I used. This uh, Twitter bot in Node.js tutorial was especially helpful for setting up the Twitter API and getting the credentials and all of that. And then those are just the two packages and the Twitter docs also. So thank you.